Okay. So, um, okay. So I want to welcome everybody to Monday Whispers Chat. And Monday Whispers Chat is um, all about being able to create a holistic life and finding balance. And every week during Monday Whispers Chat, we actually feature an amazing and inspiring woman. And this week, um, I bring you Donna Price. So Donna is going to talk about the rise of the visionary wo uh, woman womanpreneur. And Donna is the host of a visionary wo womanpreneur's podcast and a business and marketing strategist. Donna is, it says Donna is, has, <laughs> Donna has four <laughs> published books. Donna helps womanpreneurs refine and master business and marketing strategies that become systems for success. Donna Price is a visionary entrepreneur herself and loves working with women around the world to make an impact in their lives, their communities, and in the world. Donna believes that women entrepreneurs are a powerful force that keeps families and communities working. Compass Rose Compass Rose Consulting was founded in 2003 with a mission to make an impact on business success. So welcome, Donna. So Thank is there you. anything else that you want to be able to share about yourself? Um, I don't think so. I'm excited to be here and be with you and inspired by your background of all those positive things that you have behind you. Thank so. you. So yeah, so I've been um, so I've been working in my field for the last since 2001, and um, so in my business um, since 2015, I've incorporated holistic healing in with my background of psychotherapy. So yeah, so it's it's a little different for a lot of that, different, and I'm seeing it more and more in the last um, in the last few months. Is that I'm seeing that happen more and more that people are like opening up to that, which is actually kind of cool. Um, because you really do need that. Uh, I believe that you really do need that piece. So that's um, so that's really great. So, um, so tell me a little bit more about what is it that um, about what is it that you do? Thanks. Well, I work with womenpreneurs predominantly um, to help their businesses succeed. And I, um, as a business owner myself, when I went into business, I had that. Um, naive belief that if I built it, they would come and didn't really know all the pieces about being in a business. I was coming out of the nonprofit world. I had friends that were in business and really successful. But when you're seeing friends be successful, you don't see like how they actually got to that place of a success yeah. and the work that went into getting there. Um, so it looked easy. It looked fun, looked, you know, like you have time freedom and you're doing great things. And um, I quickly found out that I needed to figure out how to market my business. Yeah. And then I started um, finding that the other business owners that I was meeting also needed to market their business, that they didn't have that skill either. Um, and so I started learning marketing. And I believe that you can change your business when you change your marketing. And when you have marketing, that works and you have a system that works, then your bottom line changes. And so I work with women printers to fall in love with marketing and <laughs> embrace it because what I hear is I hate marketing. And um, once you fall in love with it and see what it can really do for your business, then you just, you keep falling in love more and more with it yeah. because it really can impact your business. And that's definitely me. That's that. That's definitely me that says, and I've actually shifted my words. So I'm actually not going to say that out loud um, is that um, marketing is something that is an acquired taste and I am working towards <laughs> being a successful, um, successful at marketing. So that is definitely, I've come from a background of um, working for different agencies that it's already there. It's, it was a fully, they're fully funded program. So people didn't ma need to pay to come in. They had the referrals. It was like never an issue. And so that has been my challenge is trying to, um, is definitely trying to like figure out how to be able to market myself and how to be able to get um, people to know who I am on, especially on the virtual side of things. And yeah. so like even, um, 
So like I can stand there, I can go to, so we had a vendors uh, or um, a self care fair on Saturday and I can, I can stand there and tell them all the things about what it is that I'm doing and how it is that I'm doing it quite, quite easily while they're standing in front of me. Right. Put that camera in front of me or like put those, those static posts up and it's like, Oh, what am I supposed to say? (laughs) Yep. (laughs) I think it's definitely challenging. I think that um, one of the things that happens for women maybe more than men is that we were taught early on to not brag about ourselves and not boast. Yeah. And now you sort of have to brag about yourself or it feels like that yeah. to promote yourself and talk about yourself. And so we have to get, we have to kind of step out of our comfort zone to do that um, and feel comfortable and confident in doing that. And I think that it's, um, I think that it's perhaps different for women than it is for men, just that piece of it. But you're like me. I came out of the nonprofit world and we had a waiting list for clients. Yeah. Like we didn't go out looking for anyone. <laughs> nope. Like we sat, you know, on a panel choosing who was going to be the best fit for the program off the waiting list. And so it was totally um, a new thing to yeah. figure out like how you put a message out and then the internet like took off and so anything that you figured out early on then you had to change what you were doing to fit into the internet and the um and so like with ours we, we actually had scoring systems so it's like based on um their needs how long they had been on the list what it was that was going on if they they qualified for the list because sometimes we would refer them out saying ministry funding wouldn't allow them to be able to have that yeah. funding and so like it was that and like you said like the waiting list i even forgot about the waiting list because it's been so long um that uh, that i've been out of it now that um that i forgot about that waiting list but we were actually talking about that today in another setting so it's just uh, it's it's interesting how the dynamics are so much different when you're coming from that nonprofit world and you're you're doing the things that um that need to be um like so obviously our executive directors they do whatever that they need to be doing in terms of the marketing but it makes it so much easier when you've got this agency that you're actually working for that allows you to be able to do that so and the funding that pays for all the services so you, yeah it's a totally different ball game it is it makes a huge huge difference yeah um so i had a number of clients that when i started at my own practice um because i had been um unable to work for a year because i was ill and so when i actually started practicing and started my business and started moving forward people were like oh yes you're coming back to work i'm gonna be able to work with you and then when i would say okay well this is how much that it costs to work with me they're like oh you have to pay <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like yeah it's not a, it's yeah. not covered under whole hip sorry like um yeah. like that was definitely a huge shift and a huge challenge so then it was kind of like oh how do i do this and then it would be like the the clients that really that i felt that really needed my help then i would still work with them for free and then it would be like okay well this isn't paying my my, my bills this isn't helping right. me so it's like how do i do this like how do i find that balance so so for those that, so what are some of the common um, challenges? So we've talked about a few of them. What are some of the common challenges that, um, that you hear from your clients? Well, I see people um, doing a lot of marketing, but they haven't thought it, they haven't put it together strategically. You know, so maybe they've worked with somebody that said, well, you need a website and you need to do social media. And they've got all these pieces that are happening, but they haven't put them together in a way where it's really a system that generates new business for them because that's ultimately the goal for most people is to have a system that generates new business consistently reliably and so i see people kind of throwing things out Mm -hmm. i call it hope marketing (laughs) they hope that it's going to work yeah and um and sometimes like you're it's going to work a little bit, but it's not going to work as well as you need it to probably and as predictably or reliably as you want it to, you know, so um, you want to be able to know that when you're putting money out to marketing, that it's producing results. Yeah. So you have that ROI um, and those results need to, 
eventually ended up in paid clients. Yeah. You know, so. So one of the things that you said um, is ROI. So for people that don't know what that means, like what does ROI stand for? Your return on investment. Okay. So, so if you decided, for instance, to do Facebook ads, Facebook ads or Google paid per click ads, they can add up very quickly. Mm -hmm. Even if your budget is small, it, when you're doing a, an ad that's running every single day, when you look at your bill at the end of the month, you're like, oh, oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so if that ad didn't actually convert into new business, then that's coming out of your pocket, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So you want it to, we want to set it up so that when you're doing that ad, you've got a system that you can track what's happening with that ad and, and you can see quickly whether it's going to pay for itself. Yeah. So ultimately your marketing, you know, should pay for itself minimally. And then you should make some money after, you know, after you've paid for your marketing, you yeah. should start making money. But what I see people doing is they'll, um, put an ad out or um, do some other type of marketing and the call to action is to call them. And I think that calling like that call to action, I consider a high risk behavior. Yeah. Like I think of myself with cold calling and I think I don't really like cold calling. Yeah. And most of the people that I know don't like cold calling. But when we do an ad and we have the call me as our action, that's essentially what we're asking somebody to do is to cold call us yeah. for our business. And the risk to them is that once they get us on the phone, we're going to try and sell them something. Yeah. And so giving people, creating a strategy that doesn't feel risky to people. You know, so maybe you're going to get a couple calls because people are in that, I need this service right now. I'm in crisis yeah. or, you know, what, depending on your business, I need it now. So you're going to get a couple calls. Um, but you want to have the ability to market to the people that didn't feel comfortable calling you and setting up a strategy for doing that. Yeah. And I know that for me is that if this, if the ad is interesting enough, I'm going to click through the sales page and I'm going to click through the information that needs to go through and then I'm going to purchase. But if they ask me to call them, chances are I'm not likely. And, and you're right. Like that is, um, so very seldom do like, so if I'm asking somebody to call me, it's because we've already had a conversation. So right. we've been having the conversation, whether it was through email or through chat or what, or in person. And so if I'm asking them to set up a time to be able to connect with it, with me, and it's not necessarily so that they can jump into one of my programs, it, it might be if that is going to be the best option for them. But sometimes it's just simply a way of being able to um, have a conversation to see whether or not this is the right um, the right fit, whether or not this is going to be the, um, the right approach. And sometimes it's a referral to somebody different because right. it's not necessarily something that's going to be helpful to me. But I know that for me, like if I have to go on to that call, it's like, I don't want to have a call. I just want to, I just want to sign up. So like, if I'm interested, I want to be able to sign up and, um, and be able to, so like if the sales, um, page is interesting enough, then I want to be able to sign up and, and move forward with that. So, and that automation of being able to like signing up, getting the things that I'm supposed to be getting, signing up with the way that I'm wanting to be able to do. And so, and that's the purpose of my new website is supposed to be, um, set up so that it's actually going to, um, to follow through on all those different things. We're still in the early part of the stages and getting that up and running, um, on the new site, but, um, cause I finally switched to WordPress, um, after, 
um, after this many years, I finally, I've finally taken the plunge uh, <laughs> into WordPress. I've been, I've been putting it off for some time. And so now that's, that's the stage that we're in and where it is that we're at. So, um, but it's being able to take that step and being able to, because one of the things that I would often hear is like, oh, sounds like you've got great programs and you've got all these different things that are going on, but I don't really know what it is that you're doing. So how do you, um, so like, what would you say to clients that are saying like, I don't know what to do. Like I, I've, I've, cause like you said, like it's that hope and wish, right? So like, what are some of the things that, um, what are some of the things that you can tell people that would be, um, helpful? Like what, what kind of, um, ideas or suggestions that would you have? Yeah. So I'd like to have a free offer for people to start with. So that they can, like my goal initially is to build my list mm -hmm. so that I can then educate people about the different things that I do. Yeah. And so the best way, in my belief, to get somebody to sign up on my list is to offer them something in exchange for um, their name and email or their email. And then I can start educating them about our services and marketing in general for their business. So I believe on that email list, then I'm going to provide value and I'm going to serve. Like yeah. that's my goal. I'm still not going in sell, sell, sell. So it's educate and provide value to the person. Mm -hmm. What I've found is that um, a lot of more traditional like offline businesses um, like chiropractor or massage therapist or some of practitioners that are working directly with people in person don't see the value in that online piece for their business. Yeah. They don't see how it translates to them. You know, like that's like online marketers. But what I've found is that even when I'm out networking with somebody in person, you know, if you're at a networking meeting, you've got like that 30 seconds to say what you do or maybe 60 seconds. And that's just like a little piece of yeah. what most of us do. And if I don't say the little piece that you need today, then you're not interested. Like you think that's all I do. Yeah. But if I have a chance to continue talking to you through email, then there can be a day where you get an email and you're like, ah, that's what I needed. I didn't know she did that. Yeah. And that's when the person reaches out to you because all of a sudden you've, you're either your timing is right. You know, it's the day that they need it. And maybe you said it 10 times already and they just didn't hear it yeah. or um, like something's changed in their business. Yeah. You know, they've needed it now where they didn't need it before. You know, like I think of my kids you know, like you think of communication and you think you're so clear and then you've told a, your child to do something and they like totally don't understand what you said. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so clear. <laughs> so it's the same in business. Like we think we're being really clear, but people don't get it yep. the first time or the second time or the third time. And we have to keep saying it in different ways over and over again yeah and it's about building a relationship you know so people do business with people they know like and trust yep and we're meeting people online and they still need to know like and trust us before they're gonna do business with us and that makes a huge difference. And so, um, so for some time, like I've had um, a number of different people that have been following me on, I, I'm more starting to do more stuff on Instagram, but so it's been more Facebook, but it's like, oh, well, yeah, I've been watching what it is that you're saying. And, and that is, and that is the feedback that I typically get from clients that do start working with me because I'm dealing with their emotions um, is like, is my background is that that's what it is that we're dealing is we're dealing with emotions, we're dealing with their life situations. And so knowing who it is that I am and knowing who I am, and that is the feedback that I get from most of the people that do start working with me. It was, about, it was about my honesty. It was about the way that I, I talked and, um, and like even for, um, this, 
interview series. Like I said, I don't even introduce myself anymore because like half the time it doesn't work for me. So yeah. it's like, um, because then I get stumbled on my words because it's like that perfectionist brain that gets kicked in. So now it's just, I come on and I'm me. And if I happen to drop something and I have to stop and pick it up, then I stop and pick it up. And, um, and if there's a glitch in the system, like today, we're not doing a Facebook live, but it'll be, um, it'll be pre-recorded and sent back in those kinds of things would set like really set me off. And, um, then it would be like, Oh, this isn't working properly. And that isn't working properly. And so now I'm able to say, okay, so it's not working. And where my response before used to be like, oh, okay, sorry, Donna, it's not working. We're going to have to cancel. Now it's like, no. Oh. So here's plan B. We have a different plan and we're going to be able to still load it up. People are still going to be able to see it. I'm still going to be able to put it on YouTube. It's still going to be able to go on my website. And so like all these things are still going to be able to still happen and I don't need it to be perfect. I don't need it to have like, I need to have a system and I still need to have ways of things going and flowing, but I don't need to have it so that it's, um, and, and then people appreciate the fact that I'm real about it. And so that makes a huge, a huge difference. And I know that it does. And clients have told me that. So it's about being able to be real and being me. And, um, and that is something that's really important for, um, for a lot of people is that being real and being able to do that. So what are your, um, what's your experience with that? I totally agree with you. I think that, um, when you're real, when you have imperfection, then people can relate to that because we're all imperfect. Really? Oh, darn. <laughs> when I've so hard. <laughs> but, <laughs> and I think that um, when, in terms of marketing, like when you wait for your marketing to be perfect, like you're just losing tons of time. Yeah. And like you're better off, like I've had, um, typos in emails and I've people have emailed me oh you've got a typo here and there's an opportunity there to start a conversation with yeah. that person you know thanks so much for letting me know I didn't even catch that you know and so instead of like beating yourself up like oh my gosh I had a typo like you take the opportunity from this person to just randomly email you and start yeah. a conversation. Um, so I think that imperfection is like something that we all have and we can embrace it to a certain extent. We can strive for perfection, but it's important to not get stuck in that like need for it to be perfect before we do anything. Yeah. And like, and that's the same as like, so what I was reading your, your intro, right? So it was the is has, and I'm like, yeah. uh, is has. <laughs> and so, <laughs> and same as when the description is in zoom, like in the zoom description is they actually just cut off words at letters. And so, um, I think it was a couple of weeks ago that I was actually reading somebody's and I was trying to understand, like, I'm like, be, uh, be, <laughs> oh, that's all supposed to be one word. <laughs> Right? right. So like even today it says master B is isiness on yours. And it's like, yeah. okay, well that doesn't make sense. Like why would it? So like zoom obviously needs to fix the way that they actually divide the words, but, um, but it's like, I just kind of go with it. Right. So I was reading and I got stumbled cause I was doing the is has and I'm like, Oh, is has okay is has published four books right so it's like it's not the end of the world if that that i have that and um and even when i'm speaking like i'm not sitting there like so sometimes you get stuck on a word and you're like oh okay what's that word and if i'm in person and i'm stuck on that word it's not a big deal like i'm standing there and i've ta i've taught different classes and i've taught different things and so i'd be standing in front and like a word just escapes you because like i'm human and like it's like oh okay just kind of vanished i have no idea where that word is or you're talking and your train of thought disappears right like who yeah. hasn't done that those are just normal things those used to stress me out when I was doing the marketing piece and um and so like jumping on live and I still get really nervous and anxious when I actually jump on live but it's still but now it's like oh okay well it didn't go so great right so today it didn't connect to live oh well yeah not the end of the world right so 
Um, whereas I used to be like, oh no, I can't put it out because it wasn't perfect. Oh, I have to record, I have to pre-record this because I need it to go out and say everything perfectly. And when I first started doing that, my husband would laugh at me. And because he would hear my message over and over and over again, he's like, I think that you're at take a hundred. And I'm like, yeah, it could be, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and so, because I wasn't even keeping the evidence, like I would delete it and start yeah. over again. Right. So it's that, um, that needing to be able to not be perfect and be able to move, move that forward and do the next step. So what are some of the other challenges? That so I think the other challenges that people have, well, I think people are scared to email. They're scared to use email and they're scared that email doesn't work anymore. And I follow a lot of internet marketers that, email a lot and i firmly believe that if they're doing it they only do things that work and they don't really they watch their numbers and they see their conversions and they know that it's going to work so i believe that email still works and it's a great way when done well for continuing to build that relationship and follow yeah. up with people um, it's the way that it's the list that you truly own in your business. Yeah. Like it's your asset as part of your business is your email list of customers, potential customers. Um, you know, we can all have, you know, thousands of followers on Instagram, but those are Instagrams. Like we can see them, but we can't necessarily get them all onto yeah. our list. Yeah. Um, so if Instagram disappears, there go our thousand or five thousand or a million, whatever we've got, are gone to us. Yep. So um, we need to build that asset within our own business so that we have control over it. And and that was again one of those other things that I really struggled with because it was like, oh, well, what happens if they want to if they like jump off my list? Like, what happens if they don't want to hear from me? And so now it's like I don't pay attention to people that so like hopefully they're signing up to my list hopefully they find that what it is that I'm sending is is interesting and um, helpful but if it's not then and they leave my list well then they're not likely going to be clients that are actually going to be they're not potentially going to be my clients anyway so if they're not following me and they're not interested in what it is that I have to offer through my emails then um, and I, and I don't always just sell things through my emails. Like I really just have conversations with them. And so, um, and that's shifted, that has changed because it was like, oh, well, how am I going to have a conversation with them? Like, I don't know what to tell them. Like, how am I going to have, a and so like now it's like, okay, this is what my week's been like. And this is the conversations that I'm having in my emails. And, and I usually have it. So like on Mondays, I send a reminder out that today is Monday whispers. And on Wednesdays, I usually just talk about whatever. And if there's something that is going on, so like if it's um, whatever, right, whatever it is that's happening, then I'm talking about that. And, um, and then on Fridays is my, this is what it is that I have going on this week, if you want to be able to sign up to everything. So those are my three times and if you're already in a program then you're getting different emails so you're getting those ones but you're also getting different emails based on the program that you're in so reminders of our meetings and reminders of um, the next upcoming class or if there's another um, if there's another thing that's going on and so um, and so that's how I, and but it took me a really long time to be able to do that so I've only been doing that for the last um, couple months consistently since our Delia started so um, so February, so roughly about February is when I was, and, and part of that was because I also didn't have time to be able to do things. So I have a, yeah. um, a virtual assistant that actually helps me um, get things done and get things figured out. And so like that has been really helpful so that my social media is ready and my emails are ready. And um, the last couple of weeks has not been happening. I'm doing that while they're working on trying to fix the website because the situation that had happened with my website. And that would be another thing is that people... Um, despite the fact that my website wasn't ready to be um, continuing to be launched and we completely wiped it out on Friday and started scratch on Friday and from scratch on Friday and I didn't have a oh you can't come to my website um, thing it was like 
you go to the page and you can see some short codes and you can see some different things that were going on. And But if you keep coming back to my website because you're interested in what I'm doing, then you're going to keep coming back to my website to see like yep. what's happening. What's ha And my social media has been very open about the fact that like things have been crazy and same as my in my emails. It's like, sorry, but like things are not exactly the way that they're supposed to be. And so for now, while we're trying to do that, there's a discount on my program. So you want to be able to jump in now? This is the best time because of all of the little glitches that are happening, then you can get in on that discount. But That's if you great. want to wait till it's perfect, then, <laughs> then you get it at full price, your choice, right? Yeah. So, um, so like it's- Yeah, I, def I definitely had the, when I first started email marketing and people unsubscribed, like I felt sick. Yeah. But I was like, oh my gosh, what did I do? Um, did I offend them? Did I, you know, email too much? And now I'll look to see if people unsubscribe. Sometimes I'll look at who unsubscribed, but most of the time it's just like, okay, they didn't need to be on this list anymore. Um, they didn't, they're not, they're not really people that are going to do business with me. So yeah. it's, and you really want on that email list, people that are good potential clients for you. Yeah. You know, people that are going to engage with you in some way. And like, and it makes a huge difference, right? So like I've had, so we hosted a women's conference. Um, so it's women inspiring women. And so like, it's not business related that, that, um, so it's just that because we do have, so international women's day, a lot of it has to do with business. And so my purpose of, um, women inspiring women conference is about being able to get women that are there to be able to like what kind of messages like right so we're all women we all have these these same underlying like insecurities and we all have these same under underlying um concerns we have all we've all have these same underlying um family issues like there's still so many things that um we all have in common they might be the situations might be a little bit different but yeah. in terms of how it resonated and so this year we had 11 women that had um that were speaking and so the feedback that i got from most of the people who were there is that the I, I received something from every single woman that was there. Like, so yeah, her situation wasn't the same as mine and her situation wasn't the same as mine, but this underlying message was the same. This underlying message was the same. This one was the same. And it was just really incredible to be able to see that. And so, um, and because like, like you said, like not everybody's going to resonate with the things that you're doing. And so like, and if that's not who it is that you're attracting, then they're not going to come anyway. And so some of the people who attended, um, were people that I did know and, but they were also people that I didn't realize, didn't think that they would actually come. I didn't think that they were, would be the type of person who would actually attend one of these events for different reasons. And yeah. I was like, Oh wow. Like something in what it is that I shared was interesting enough that they actually wanted to be able to come and participate in my event. And so like, and that's, so I just put it out there, right? And just do the things that way and and see where it goes from there, so. Definitely. I think that like when you're hearing other people speak, well, a lot of times like when I, when I do webinars or workshops, I always tell people, write down the ideas that come to you for you. Yeah. Don't write down what I'm saying because usually, you know, it's not that important what I'm saying. But <laughs> if it makes you think of something that can be helpful to you, yep. like those are the ideas that you want to like capture on your notepad or, you know, in the, in the margins of the book or whatever. Yeah. Because and, those are the inspiring things. And, and those are your ideas, right? And sometimes people, and again, different people, and because we're dealing with different emotions, different people will have like, oh, okay, well, um, so like, what is it that I need to be doing? And, and most of the time, what it is that I say, like 99% of the time when I go to start anything is take what you need and leave the rest. Because you may only get one little nugget out of this, or you may not get any little nugget out of this week, but next week you might get something, right? So it all kind of depends. And same as with some of the people that I follow is like, it's the same thing, right? So sometimes it's like, oh, I don't know that I'm really into that topic. And, but I usually come back and listen again, just because they are people that I'm, I'm interested in. And it's like, oh, that is interesting. I really do want to sign up for that program. Um, but the other stuff, and it might be the same program, 
Right. <laughs> but it's just, it wasn't resonating with me at that point of what it is that they were offering and what it is that they were doing. And it's just being able to, like, that, like I said, that message of take what you need and leave the rest because that's huge. Yep, definitely. So what are some of the other, um, like, is there anything else that we haven't talked about that you think would be really important for people to know? Ah, that's a big question. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> You're right. We're talking marketing. There's lots to do. There's so many things. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> I think, um, like, I just encourage people to think it through, like, what they're what their goal is with the marketing that they're doing yep. and then what they, um, how they're going to get to that goal, you know? So even like, um, trade shows, I've had people that are doing, I've done trade sh shows, not in a while, but you know, you're paying for a booth, you're paying for giveaway things, you're spending hours talking to people. So what's the plan when you do that? And I've gone to trade shows where I've left my business card with every single person. I've even handed my business card to people and said, I need what you have and never heard a word from them. Yeah. You know, so they just spent however much money to be there. You know, so I see it the same on on the internet, if you're doing marketing, you just want to think your process through, like what's the full strategy yeah. of like spending my time, my money, my resource in whatever your marketing tactic is and how am I going to make it work for my business instead of just winging it. Yeah. Like put it together strategically. So you have a way of like actually having at least having leads at the end of that. Yeah. And, and those are really, really important, right? So like, I know that most of the time when I'm going, <laughs> when I'm going to trade shows, I might get a client or two, maybe, but my purpose of going is to be able to network with the other businesses. And so it's like, what do they have to offer? What is it that they're doing? Um, that can help me and benefit me. Is there something that we can do to partner? Is there something that I can do in terms of purchasing a service? Like what kind of things is it that, um, and so probably a good 99% of, um, of my purpose for being at a trade show for me. And that's not for everybody, but for me, it's about being able to connect with other, um, with other entrepreneurs and mainly because like I'm in my own bubble in my own, um, in my own home. And it's not the same as like, cause I would have those social networks and I'd have those opportunities to be able to talk with them, um, with my colleagues and those kinds yeah. of things. And so like, even though I'm in some groups, being able to go and participate in some of those things is, and that's usually what my purpose is, is being able to have that opportunity. So unless I'm doing a speak a speech or whatever, like if I'm, I'm one of the speakers at an event, that kind of thing. But it's um, a lot of times it's just simply a way of me being able to like connect with humans as opposed to like humans through the internet, because that is my business mainly is that um, a good percentage of what it is that I do is virtual. I do have some home like in-person programs as well, but most of them are actually virtual. And so, um, so being able to have that connection with others and knowing what it is that they're doing and, um, and what, what do they have that might help benefit my business as well is so like one of the ladies that I met, um, at the one we did on Saturday was, um, she's, um, she heads up a, um, a resource for people who have, um, that, who offer Reiki. And so it's like, Oh, cool. Like, this is great. And apparently they get together and as a group so that they can actually connect and they can talk about things. And so like, it's a great way of being able to connect. So like when somebody came, cause I do mainly, um, distance Reiki. I don't usually do it um, in person and the odd time I do, but not typically. And because that's not my, how my service is set up. And so when somebody came to my table and like, no, I really want to be able to do like in-person Reiki. So I was able to actually direct them to the to the person across the table. So she's somebody that I can actually refer others to who really need to be able to do something in person. Yeah. So like, it's that, that being able to be connecting. So like, again, it's, and again, it's the purpose, like what is that purpose? Right. Exactly. Right. Exactly. So, 
So um, is there anything else? And I know that's another loaded question, but. <laughs> well, I think um, one of the things kind of early on in putting your marketing plan together is being really clear on who your target market is. And um, I know that it sounds basic, but um, I, I see people that will say everybody yeah. or anybody. And, yeah. <laughs> you know, and like definitely, in some, in some businesses, everybody could benefit or anybody could benefit. But when you start targeting who you want to do business with or who you're marketing to, it's easier to market to a specific group of people. Mm -hmm. So, like, for instance, um, I was working with a chiropractor specialized in um, serving people with concussions. Okay. So, so it's a little bit different, you know, still did back pain, neck pain, shoulder pain, like all the other pains, yeah. but we could set up something very specific that targets people with concussions. Cause that's a specific group of people. Yeah. You know, so we would set something up that like advertising that would target those people, get them into our email list so that we're talking to them about how does this work with concussions? Um, and then you can do the same thing with the back pain people or the, you know, allergy people. Does chiropractic help with allergies? And this is how it can help. Yeah. You know, so it, it, again, goes to, like, I look at, like, what's the person's pain and how do I solve it? And so a lot of us solve a lot of different pain. But if we can target our message to one particular pain spot, then our advertising can focus on that. And then we're, you know, whether it's newspaper or radio or online, it helps us focus our marketing message. And then again, we're going to bring them kind of into our marketing funnel so that we're getting their name and email. And then we can continue educating them about how we can solve that pain. And, and that was, again, that's, again, another one of those, like, because I, think came it, from, I came from an agency, right? So it's like you work with all of them, right? So you work with right. the, you work with men, women, you work with families, you work with, and so, like, I, so I, so now my marketing is, like, in terms of, like, who my, I work with is that I say that I primarily work with women who have experienced um, trauma of some sorts but like if somebody comes through that says well I've never had trauma but I want to work with you then I can still work with them and that's not an issue um, but it's like in terms of who it is that I'm speaking to and typically 90% of the time of who it is so like my niche is actually moved in even further so like it's people who've experienced trauma but that have also that are also suffering from anxiety and that was that's clients that decided to bring that forward right so like it wasn't me seeking and saying oh okay well i need to so like a lot of the things that i do a lot of the things that i teach a lot of the things that i offer within my programs because a good percentage of my clientele have anxiety and that's what it is that i focus on mostly because it fits the larger the larger group of the people that i follow that that follow me or that that work with me so yeah so when you're when you're focused like that, you're able to use those words in your marketing message and then people can self-identify. Yeah. Like I had trauma or I have stress or anxiety, whatever the words are that you decide to use for that marketing. And yeah. it becomes clearer to me as the person seeing it, whether you're some like whether I'm going to raise my hand and say, yeah, that's me. Yeah. Like, and, and then the people that you're getting on your list are more targeted for what you do. Yeah. Like, and like you said, um, if somebody comes in, like if I say, I just work with chiropractors, but a Reiki master comes in, I can still work with that person. <laughs> yeah. You know, like so we, can, we can still choose, you know, just like when you take your car to the car dealer, like, you know, we have Kias, but if I was driving a Toyota, my Kia dealer would still look at the Toyota yeah. and fix it if I needed it fixed. So, like, we all have that flexibility to welcome people into our businesses. But picking that target market 
helps your marketing dollar be more effective. And it really does make a difference. So like when people would, like when I first started and people would say that, it'd be like, but I don't want to like, I don't want to like just work with one kind of person. I don't want to be just focused on one person. Like I like working with teens. I like working with families. I like working with men. And so then, um, so then what I ended up doing was like, who is it that I'm attracting is how I, um, is how I had to find my target market because I really struggled with that because I had 15 years experience of working in the general population that I really needed to I st and again because we've got the wait lists and we've got the like they come through our doors we weren't going seeking for them and so it was like trying to figure out how to be able to do that was it was definitely um was definitely a challenge and so um and yeah I, I found it really scary to like narrow it down. It's like, well, you know, and I find that with clients too. Like it's scary that you're going to miss out on business because you narrowed your target market. And the reality is that your business tends to grow when you make that decision to do it. It does. But it doesn't seem like that's what's going to happen. <laughs> no, it doesn't. <laughs> And it makes it, like I said, and like you said, it makes it that scary part, right? So like I struggled with it. I struggled with the first person that I dealt with marketing with. And in the first program that I was in for marketing, I'm like, I'm not niching down. Like, it's just not going to happen. Like, I don't want to shut people out. I want to be open. And, and, and part of that is coming from, um, funding where it's like everything is very closed right so the funding yeah. you're only allowed to do this and you're only allowed to do this and you're only allowed to do that and so it was like i don't want to be in these like pockets again like i i'm out of that i don't want to be back in there and so i really struggled with being put back into like these pockets but then it was like no i can still serve these other people but this is who it is that i'm primarily working with and there's some programs that was only women based anyway and so it's like well why would i not just stick with women so um so like when i do my retreats like it's women only like we're in one cabin like we're not bringing in men to come into this single right. cabin like it's just not going to happen yeah and so it's like well then let's just focus on that that's who it is that i'm focusing on and so same as like um so some programs i will accept teenagers to come in other times they won't because it depends on what it is that's going on and what the what the topics are and who it is that we're dealing with and so sometimes i will sometimes i won't so some of it because and part of that is because most of the women that i actually have are caretakers and so if we bring in teenagers or somebody else then they're going to stop focusing on themselves and they're going to focus on what this other person needs and so i really needed to like and that, so like those were all the things that i actually had to go through in terms of my thinking as to how is it that i'm actually doing this so for um so most of the time like i definitely don't bring in men for any of those kinds of things i don't bring in teenagers for those kind and again it depends on the age and and maturity so like if there is somebody that i think that probably would fit then i will bring them in but like it's still very much like I, I get to choose that piece. Yeah. And like, if that's not going to work, then I can possibly put something together for someone else. But otherwise, it's like, no, this is who I'm focusing on and this is what it is that I'm doing. So, and like I said, it took me a really long time. So for those of you who are watching going like, oh, Donna, you're just crazy. Yeah. <laughs> and that's why I kind of threw in my own, um, my own uh, little tidbits as to what it is because like it's my reality right so like that and yeah. my reality is somebody else's reality so like I know that somebody else is out there going like okay no no Donna's crazy like that's just not gonna happen I'm not gonna just work on one person and I'm not gonna just right so I'm not gonna just focus on one problem I want to be able to I want to be able to do all and so like those are um, so those are different, different things. Yeah. And, you know, and that's why I'm like, okay, I'm going to give some examples, like as we're talking. So, um, so what, are, what was one of your biggest challenges? Like one of your biggest challenges when you first started? Ah, um, <laughs> I think figuring out the marketing piece was definitely my biggest challenge because, you know, similar to you, I came out of the nonprofit world yeah. and just really didn't have a clue. I would, I had done speaking training. So that piece was fine. Yeah. Um, but it was different being an entrepreneur and going out and like just introducing yourself and networking and meeting 
people. Yeah. Um, I think there were experiences in my life that helped me to do that um, more easily. Um, but it took some some time to really figure it out and and become better at it. So yeah. I think the marketing piece was definitely the biggest challenge was figuring that out. And I, I guess part of what I do is like when I'm challenged, then I dive in and learn it. And, and then, and now I'm teaching it <laughs> and, <laughs> and helping other people to do it. Um, because I, I think it's what can, you know, I started off doing business coaching where we, you know, talk about your vision and your strategy and like, and I think all of those pieces are really important. But what I found was that the people coming to me, they were like, I don't have time to do that. I need clients now. Yeah. Like, I need more people now. And so now I work with people on like, how do we grow your business? And at the same time, like, let's talk about that vision strategy, like put the foundations of business in place at the same time that we're working on marketing and scaling up. Yeah. You know, because those pieces are important. But, exactly. but people have to pay bills too. Yeah. <laughs> yep, definitely. Like I said, starting off and like, oh, okay, I'm going to help this, this client for free. I'm going to help that client for free. That really didn't pay my bills for the first year. Like that was just, it's like, oh, I can give that person a discount and I can give that person a discount. And then it's like at the end of the day going like, oh, how am I supposed to do that now? Yeah. Right? So. So, um, so what we're going to be doing for those of you who are catching the replay is that um, this is going to be on the YouTube channel, um, but it's also going to be on my Facebook page and, um, and we'll definitely share it. So now, is there anything that you um, have to offer that, that, will, um, that you want to be able to share with people? Definitely. Well, I just last week came out with a new um, book that's available called The Visionary Womenpreneur's Field Guide. And it kind of takes everything that we've been talking about and lays it out in, a, in an ebook. And so it's available for people at visionarywomenpreneurs.net backslash field guide. Um, but if you just go to the .net, I'm pretty sure you're gonna get to the page for the field guide. And what um, is it called, Donna? Because I'm gonna actually write it down because I'm gonna go take a look. Yeah, it's Visionary Women Printers. So Visionary and then Women Printers um, is W-O-M-E-N-P-R-E-N-E-U-R-S. Dot net. Okay. And someday I will learn that you need to pick really simple domains. <laughs> <laughs> well, I use Bitly links a lot um, just because it makes things easier. Um, and same as like now my, my domain name, I've actually uh, changed my domain name to, it's my name. So it's rollyalaire.ca. <laughs> so, and then if I'm doing a program, it's always like, so if it's um, sister soul medicine, then it's like sis, sister hyphen soul hyphen medicine. So that it's like uh, backslash, so that it's like, just makes things easier. Because yep. <laughs> then it's like, oh, this is the name of the program. Okay, that's what it is that we're looking for. So it just makes it easier. So, um, so definitely, I've learned that one, that lesson too. Yeah. Um, but definitely, again, I'm gonna go and check out your book and um, and definitely, thank you. Some more, um, some more information. So now you said, is it in an ebook form? It is. So it comes to you right away. Okay. And um, you can download it and um, and it's. It's not a real long book, so it's easy, actionable ideas for your business. Okay. So I'm going to add that in the description, um, okay. just because it's not, because it had, um, so I have like learn more about Donna. So I'm actually gonna add that, for those of you who are actually catching the replay, I'll actually put that in the description so that you guys will be able to find that easy. Um, because I can't just pop the link in, um, <laughs> like we would normally right. do <laughs> live um so i'm going to make sure to put it in the description box so that you guys have access to it that way and for those of you who are catching 
um, this through the YouTube channel, then I will, you'll actually be able to do that. So really, really excited that for those of you who've been following Wendy Whispers chat, um, if you actually go to my, uh, my website, not just yet, give us until the 15th, but like there are still some things, Nikki and, and Ardelia have been awesome at getting things up and running. But um, one of the things that's gonna happen is that Monday Whispers chat is actually going to be right on the main page. And the, um, the, the video that's actually gonna be showing is gonna be based on how many views. So it's gonna be the most viewed um, video. So for those of you who really enjoyed this, share this with your friends and make sure that they actually have um, the opportunity to watch it so that it will remain one of the, the main views on, the, um, on uh, my website. So that uh, will certainly help um, get the word out for Donna. So, but definitely share it and subscribe to my um, YouTube channel. And so you'll actually be able to see any of the new videos and stuff that are actually coming on. So the goal is within um, 24 or 48 hours of, so like by Wednesday is that they should be uploaded into YouTube. It all depends on uh, mine and Ardelia's schedule as to who's able to do what. So this week, this week it is me. So I'm still trying to upload all the rest of the videos onto the YouTube channel. But, um, but definitely share this and make sure that other people get to see this so that um, you can actually get the word out. Because for those of you who know friends that are actually an entrepreneur, then it really makes a huge difference in terms of how to be able to get the word out there about what their businesses are. And so a lot of the things that I have seen is um, over the years, and Donna, you probably can attest to that as well, is that a lot of the women that actually had started when I started have given up and have um, and because it's not worked and um so like it's um so if you have some friends um that are actually starting then definitely being able to get some some tidbits and like i said i'm definitely interested in the ebook um to be able to um to be able to learn more and um but love to have you guys um to learn more about donna so i didn't know about donna until donna applied so to be able to become a um an interviewee so i'm definitely going to check out more of donna's stuff and uh hope the rest of you are going to join me so thank you is there, anything, is there anything else that you would like to share before we sign off i just really appreciate the opportunity to be here you know i in my business i just I think it's about taking action and making things happen. Yeah. And that's what marketing, marketing is really about is taking action and getting out of that analysis paralysis and moving <laughs> forward. And it sounds like you're doing a great job with a lot of initiatives well, that you're taking in your business. And well, so thank you. Like it's been, it's great. been a long haul. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long haul and I have a very supportive husband so that's very helpful um, and so and I've had to learn to not send it out when it's perfect so like if it's perfect then great so like this morning I got um, early this morning I got woke up and so my Monday email um, I was gonna get up this morning and get it sent out and get it ready to go but then I got a phone call from some creepy man in Nigeria at um, shortly oh. after two in the morning, and then I couldn't go back to sleep because I had been in bed sleeping between 10, 10, 30. I had already been sound asleep. And so yeah. when I got the phone call, my body's like, oh, okay, it's time to get up. And I was like, no, it's not. <laughs> so this morning I was actually getting my Monday, my Monday email ready to go. And so people received my email like very, very early this morning. Learning. And it was like, oh no, I hope nobody has that beside their bed and it wakes them up because that's just going to be a horrible experience. But it is what it is. <laughs> so thank you very much, everybody, for joining us on Monday Whispers Chat. And again, make sure that you share this so that other people um, get to know um, some of the tips that Donna has given and definitely have some um, connect with Donna to be able to help you with some of these. Uh, these challenges that we have as uh, as womenpreneurs. So thank you so much, Donna, for joining us. Thank you. Have a great night. Bye, guys. <laughs>